Hello, it's Matthew from Cop Technical Support, uh, here today to just show how to expand an intercom system with an indoor extension. So previously, with these examples, we set up a one-to-one -one system with one outdoor station and one indoor station and linked the two together so we had a single call point. Then our customer decided that on the side entrance to their property, they'd like another outdoor station to be able to call the main indoor station. What they've now decided, however, is that sometimes they're a little bit too far away from their living room. So they'd like another screen in the kitchen, we'll say, so that they can get to that to answer it as well. And they want both of the screens to call at the same time. So before we add any other device, we're going to change the name of our main indoor station to M for main and then living room. So we have clear indication which device our main is and where it's located. So grabbing our new indoor station, same story as last time, we're going to activate. And then once activated, we're going to enable DHCP. So it takes an IP address, correct for site and my computer. Let's give that a refresh, and there we go. That's connected and has its separate IP. So let's add that into our system. This one is going to be an extension. So I'm just going to put an E in the name first of all, and it's going in the kitchen. Now, the reason I do the labeling this way around is that if a device ever fails or goes down, and you need to know the which one it is at a quick glance or which devices are linked to which other devices, the naming gives you a nice, quick and easy way of seeing it without going into any device settings. Of course, this doesn't have to be done, but it's my personal preference. We've clicked that synchronized time box just to make sure that we don't have any time related issues and we add that into our software. So with this one being an extension, we need to go into its settings. So we're opening up the kitchen device. On the left hand side beneath network and a group network settings, we're going to change the device type from indoor station to indoor extension. And this is going to be extension number one. And then we're going to save. That closed down automatically, you'll notice, and that's because the device is now going to reboot. So while we're waiting for that to reboot, um, what I'll do is explain the difference between the indoor station types. Uh, you have what's called a main indoor station, which is a standard indoor station, which is what our living room would be in this example. And then you have an extension. An extension reports and listens to a main device. Anytime the main unit receives a call, our extension receives a call, which is what we're setting up. A main device receives a call from the outdoor station based on its room number. So for argument's sake, if a block of flats had eight individual properties within it, we'd have eight indoor stations, no extensions, all labeled room one to room eight. But back to our setup. Now, if we go back into our extension, head under network, group network settings again, we'll see our settings have changed. So we need our registration password, which again, we've set up previously, and our main indoor station IP address, which is 192.168. 027. Then we hit save. Perfect. And settings wise from IVMS, that's about all we need to do. That can now take anywhere between two minutes to approximately 10 minutes, depending on network scenario. But now from either our outdoor station or side entrance, when we push our call button, it'll call the living room, which will then also call our extension in the kitchen. Answering on either will make the call go to that handset and then the doors can be opened from either screen internally as well. Thank you for watching today.